In the dim and distant past, we had websites developed and then search engine optimization was thought about afterwards. This was up until about two years ago. Website optimization and search optimization started to merge. Now we have website optimization integral throughout and thought of simultaneously when people develop a website. Content management systems. The market is dominated by WordPress, which has over 60% of the market share. The next nearest are 6 and 5%. There's over 60 more and most of them have less than 1% of the market. So what affects your site? Backlinks that are links directed towards your website. On our website at Marketing Projects, we have 865 links. 29 of which are actual sites linking into us. But they're also known as inbound links. The number of backlinks is affected as an indication of the importance and popularity of that website. So it's important to ensure your backlinks are correct and linked up effectively. For the last 20 years, we've been advising clients with little time or money that the best way of optimizing their site is to buy relevant domains and link from them into their main website. You have to be a little bit more careful with that these days because search engines are getting smart. Social media at 31% is increasingly influenced by video. So if you have video links in your website, that's a very important thing and is increasingly more powerful. Content at 26% used to be just keywords, but now it's much more measured as key phrases as opposed to words. And technical at 12% is things like access by smartphones, whether it's W3C, that's the World Wide Web Consortium compliant, download speeds and page printability, all those sorts of aspects. Google changes its search algorithm around 600 times annually. You won't keep up with this, so it's best to be honest and to make sure that you have an effective website which users love to visit. The major updates are important to look at in terms of what affects your website. Panda was sent out in 2011 and that really affects and looks at your site in terms of targeting low quality content. It looks for sites that have a high content and don't just repeat words for the sake of it. Penguin was introduced in 2012 and it targets over optimization. So things like bad links and keyword stuffing that I mentioned earlier. Hummingbird came in in 2013 and that focuses on the user's intent. So it focuses on phrases, not just keywords. And Pigeon was an innovation in 2014. It affects locality. So it hyper-localizes search results and boosts local inquiries for local sites. Something else that affects your site substantially is social media. This has been the biggest innovation and the biggest growth in the net effect. Do not buy likes, that's one thing I would definitely add. Spend time and effort getting legitimate likes rather than paying for it. When I spoke about ways to influence SEO, there's a philosophy that it's the good guys versus the bad guys. And in this sector, it's been termed black hat development areas and white hat. Black hat really looks at underhand strategies, whereas white hat is more legitimate. It was termed this in the mid 2000s. Things like invisible text, putting lists of words in white text on a white background and hiding it in your website. Meta tag stuffing, this is frowned upon now, but it's incredibly important to get your meta description on your website so that it's honest and concise. So a maximum of one or two sentences, three at most. Don't try and stuff all your keywords into the description tag. Then meta keywords, which really lost importance recently due to the rampant misuse by SEO experts from the black hat domain. The tag was created really to have a list of keywords that help search engines understand the content, but it shouldn't list your entire website keywords. Remember Google and other search engines rank your page and not your entire website, so don't feel as though you have to spread terms and words throughout all your pages. Descriptions should be relevant to your page. 
Content is king. It needs to be relevant and up to date. So for most people, we look at a set of common optimization objectives. Fixed broken links is usually high up on that list. That's things like the 404 page not found error. These really need to be minimized. Meta tags need to be put into the summary text. That's very important. Page headings, H1 to H6, if you go into WordPress. Make sure that they're accurate and not too long. The meta description for the page should also be accurate and not too long, and all photos do need to be labelled. Social media and or adwords need to be added to your website, which will help you move up those search engine rankings. Try to improve content is usually a common objective, and then once all those are put into place, you can start to be a little bit more sophisticated and look at the way visitors to the pages are managed and flow through your website. So a perfectly optimised page typically looks like this. The title and the meta elements are all in there. And we're using an example here which is typically used by other websites. It's called Chocolate Donuts from Mary's Bakery. So you can see how chocolate donuts, there's a phrase, is repeated all the way through that particular page and the words are highlighted. You've also got links through to Facebook, Twitter and other social media on the page. So that means it's built to be shared. It's also bot accessible. So it means that there's no impediments to actually searching through this. So keywords, what sort of keywords would you consider? Really, you need to pick out and section off the words that are about your business, what you're doing, for example, where you're doing it, who you're doing it for and when you're doing it. Consider separate pages for each of these particular areas. An example here was too long for us. We shortened it for greater SEO acceptability, seen below. Quick fixes. The main thing to do is to log on and use Google Analytics. Do create an XML sitemap. That can then be submitted to Google, Bing, Yahoo and all the others to help crawling. You can use www.xml-sitemaps.com this will help you put that together. Look at your click-throughs and bounces. This is very important. If you haven't got an interesting website, people will click through quickly and go onto your website, then leave straight away. If you measure these over time, are they staying the same? Are they improving? Are they getting worse? Why do you think that is? You can then start putting together some action points. Current keywords. Make sure you check your keywords and check what Google thinks they are as well. At the end, I will tell you about some useful tools to help you with this. Content drill downs. Check the clicks to a particular page, the bounces, the time on the page. These are all good indicators of how useful the page is to your visitors. You can get all this data through Google Analytics. Visitor flow. You can measure this taking the path that visitors would take. Can you spot any issues with it? And exit pages. Where do people actually leave the site? If it's on the first page they come into, this is a problem. Can they complete forms successfully or do they abandon? Finally, traffic. If your traffic is too much and that can happen, or if it's too little, if it goes up or down and how does it compare with your competitors? Measure that over time and remember to delete your cache on Google searches when you're doing this. I've run our site marketing projects through something called sitebeam.net. This gives a good indication to any website that is put into it. You get a 20 page report free of charge and we previously tested our website in March 2014. For overall we were scored 3.4 Accessibility was 6.6 .6 and content was 6.7. But since then we've simplified our website in common with a lot of newer sites. So that's only moved slightly. Marketing at 6 and technology 3.1. We're doing better now than we were doing before with our previous website. We've also looked at broken links. For example, this is the level of detail you get here. We actually only have one broken link. However, you are seriously penalized for broken links, so please do sort that out as a high priority. 
This information also helps you identify your broken link and where it is. On Twitter, we have 1600 followers and a very high number of tweets. So we have a high rating for this at 7.1. On readability, you should aim for a score of about aged 15. Even if you're a very technologically advanced site, speaking to technical people. You may be penalised on this, though. I would add that the preference is always to go for whatever the audience that is visiting your website would speak at. Freshness. The importance here is stressed on keeping your site up to date and adding new content in all the time on a regular basis. And then on search engine results, we are found really well. We get 10 out of 10 for our analytics. This looks at our domain age. Our domain was set up in 1997. It also checks headings and mobile links. So how do you get a 10 out of 10? These are some of the tools that you need to look at to achieve this. There's copyscape.com, which is a free plagiarism tool. Sitebeam, I've mentioned already. This will report on your search engine ranking out of 10. Sightliner does free and fast analytics of your entire website. It tells you where duplicate content is, broken links, internal page ranking. It redirects and gives you more. It also helps you create an XML sitemap if you need that. Google AdWords have a tool for analysing and planning keyword ads. Jumbo Keyword and Keyword Mixer. They allow you to blend and mix the keywords you need to have and upload them. And Screaming Frog is particularly useful. It basically mimics an SEO spider and it will crawl your website, checking everything out and advising you on any issues. Backlink Watch is also useful, but quite commercial these days. Check Page Rank can also analyse your site from the last three months and show you how your ranking has changed. It told us, for example, that 88% of our visitors to the website came from searching and 12% from social media. And finally, Penguin. If your website suddenly takes a dip in terms of SEO, this tool will enable you to see the impact of the Google algorithm updates on your organic traffic. If you have any questions or issues, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.